My name is Palmer Lucky. I'm the founder of Oculus and the designer of the Rift because I am a gamer. I mean, that, that's really what it is. And I think that games are the most uh, immediately applicable industry. There's going to be a lot of other things that VR is used for, but the people who have the tools to create 3D worlds right now today are all game developers. That's why most 3D worlds, interactive 3D worlds you see, are made as games. Um, so it's just kind of an obvious fit. If you need content for a virtual reality headset, it's probably going to come from game developers. And it's probably going to be games. You know, developers and the audience, and it all just fits together really well. But the real answer is, like I said, I'm a gamer. I wanted to play video games in virtual reality, and that's, that's really why the company has been so focused on gaming. Well, I, the thing is, to, you know, bef I'd probably experience more non-game applications in VR than I had games bef you know, before this. There, people weren't making games with VR support, but you know, I'd worked in a professional VR lab. Um, I'd tried a lot of military VR demos. I'd tried journalism demos, research demos, training demos, very few actual games. So it, it, it wasn't like I saw games and that was the only thing I could think of. Even trying these other things, I wish these were, I wish these were games. I wish I was playing something that was you know, a little more fun than you know, training how to exit a building safely. So I'm trying to avoid playing any favorites because one, I don't want to play favorites. Two, there's a lot of things that I've seen that are not public and then there are a lot of things that are public and I don't want to give an unfair advantage to things that have been rushed to be made public when there are just as exciting or maybe even more exciting things sometimes that are taking their time to get it right. I mean, I really like Eve Valkyrie. I think it's a great game, and that's one that I can say because you know they've they've been very public, and you know we've shown their game at our booth a lot and stuff. Um, I I wouldn't say it's my favorite thing, um, but it's definitely up there. It's a it's a very cool experience. Right now, there's not really enough of a market to monetize, so it's not something where we're going to have you know prioritize prioritize having a payment system and support staff and all of this around some kind of you know, platform, and so share is what it is today. It's a platform for people to share their, you know, demos and stuff for free, but we're gonna always continue to evolve to match what, what game developers need. You know, there's nothing to announce, but that's such a brain dead easy thing to come up with. You take a headset, you put it on, and you have a way to, you know, play your games. It, there's no reason that, that's not to say that'll be the only way to do it, um, but of course you're going to want to have something like that because the current process of how you play games on the Rift is an absolute nightmare. I mean, not to me and not to the people who use it. I'm not trying to you know, put down a tried and true method, but it's not something that an average consumer is going to be able to figure out, especially, you know, cloning desktops, extending desktops, primary desktops, which am I syncing to? How do I launch the application? Oh no, mouse control's over on this side now. What do, it, it's a lot of things to deal with. We're trying to make something that's easy for consumers to use. That doesn't mean that we're going to block things that not every consumer can use. It'd be like if you didn't, it'd, it'd be like if you had an app store that didn't allow sci scientific calculators because who the hell knows how to use one of those, right? I think that a lot of the lessons that they've learned, you know, they're, they're, they're not specific to Facebook. They're just, it's good, good, they're just good business practices. You know, you don't want to make something that's hard to use. You want to make it as easy to use as possible. And you want to make it, you want to have strong reasons for people to be using your device or your service or your platform or whatever it is you're building. Um, and I, I think we're, you know, like I said, we're, we're trying to make something that peop, anyone can use. That doesn't mean that there's not going to be things. It doesn't mean everyone will be able to use everything. I, I, I think business is interesting, but uh, that's the best way to look smart is to be the dumbest person in the room. There was no grand master plan or roadmap that led to where we are today. It's, it's really been because people saw VR and they got enthusiastic about it and it turned out it was finally good enough for people to get excited and to get behind it. That's what's led virtual reality to where it is. It's not a grand roadmap. There was no master plan that predicted we'd be hiring all of the best people in the games industry to help us tackle this problem. It's just kind of naturally grew, grew to that. No, we're not a massive success yet. What we are is we're, we're an interesting thing to watch for most people. It's easy when you're in the bubble to, you know, inside this, this bubble of VR news to get caught up and think that it's already a massive success, but it's not. We have a long way to go. The average person might know barely about that Oculus Rift thing that they heard about, you know, the, the video, the, the, the travel goggles thing, or, you know, the, the, the gaming glasses thing, or the murder simulator, who knows what they think of it as. But they don't necessarily think of it as something that they need to have in their everyday lives. And that's a long way to go till we get there. And I think it's going to be like smartphones or, you know, 
remember PDAs and ultra mobile PCs, very few people saw a way for those to fit into their lives and even fewer actually made them fit into their lives. Now, everyone has a smartphone. Everyone knows why they fit into their lives, why do they want one. Even if you're like your, your, your grandmother or your mother, they see why they need a smartphone and they see reasons to own one. VR is not to that point yet. And when we get there, that's when it's a mainstream success. When people think they need it in their lives and are actually able to then successfully integrate it into their lives. I don't know if we're the first. I think we're going to be the best for a long time. I, we're, you know, it's, it's really easy to say, you know, first this, the first that, or you know, really oddly specific ones too, where you know, it's like the first X to do Y in Z. You know, it's, uh, so we're not trying to be first. We're trying to be, we're trying to be, I guess we are trying to be first. We're trying to be the first really prominent, well-known VR company and give people a good impression of what virtual reality is. I think that we're going to stay in front. I, I, it, it could, I could be wrong, and I think that there's going to be give and take. You know, very few companies stay ahead the whole time, especially when you work in product generations that are longer than, 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 a, you know, than a year or two. The, the mobile phone industry is kind of odd like that, where the upgrade cycles are now under a year between flagship models. And I mean, that's just crazy how fast it moves. So the companies are all generally pretty level. But if you look back to you know, more, reason, more reasonable industries, like let's say the game console industry or the television industry, very rarely are they all at feature parity the whole time. Usually you know, one is up here, and then this guy goes slowly, and then they pass them. And then they're better for a few months. But then they take another leap. And then maybe they leap way above here, and they have to catch up. I mean, there's, there's always going to be this, this arms race, I think, between VR companies to try and build the best thing, whether it's hardware or software. But I think that in the long run, if you average it all out, I really hope we can stay in front because you know, we have a giant behind us. We have a lot of money behind us. We have, I think, the best people in the virtual reality industry. And we're going to create a lot more of the best people in the virtual reality industry. The people who've been working at Oculus who weren't VR experts at all a year or two ago are now probably better than the VR experts at a lot of these other companies. Um, that's, a, that's, a hard, that, that's a hard lead to overcome.